Hi, I'm Claudia Martin and today we're going to talk about storytelling, the magic of storytelling. But before I want to tell you a little bit about myself. So I'm going to be a storytelling right now. Well, I come from a multicultural family and uh, as far as I remember, I've, I grew up with two different languages. English and Spanish. I've been teach. I'm a teacher. I'm a primary teacher, and I've been teaching for a long time. I have more than 25 years of experience, and I discovered storytelling a long time ago. And uh, I discovered the wonders of this magnificent and, and marvelous uh, tool that we have in order to teach. So, um, this is what, what, we're, what you are going to see in my uh, next videos, because this is just my introduction video. Um, so, what else can I tell you about me? Well, right now I speak three languages and I tell, let me tell you that I do storytelling in the three languages and it's always a hit. So I'm going to teach you how to succeed in, okay? What's how to reach success with storytelling for children and also for the big ones. Okay, let's start. How to win over how to win children over storytelling. That's what we're going to talk about today. Because I'm, I'm, we're going to be focusing in children. Okay. First of all, I just want to tell you that we are all storytellers. We tell stories every day, every moment. Gossiping, that's storytelling. When we teach our kids how to do things, that's storytelling. At work, when our boss tells us how to do something, that's storytelling. Or when we call a friend or a relative to tell them how, how we are doing, that's storytelling. Um, so, I think storytelling is a powerful tool. It's a powerful tool to teach new things. We teach things through storytelling. To the, from the very simple storytelling, we, all, we are teaching values, we're teaching vocabulary, we are teaching also grammar, we teach everything. We teach about animals, we teach about new worlds. So, um, but, uh, okay, after that, I would like to tell you some basic things you need to know in order to have a successful storytelling. And uh, these are th uh, four or five points that I would like to line. Uh, okay, the first one, the first one, it would be choose a story. Mm, choose a story. And you, you need to choose a story depending depending on the audience you're going to have, okay? Depending if they are little, little kids like toddlers or um, kids from three to six years old, you need to tell short stories and with lots of uh, pictures and color, okay? If then, if you're gonna, if you are going to be doing storytelling for primary, children that then you can add more vocabulary and it, it could be longer but the first thing okay after you have chosen the story you're going to tell you need to know the story but not just learned it by heart okay you need to understand the plot of the story understand what's the message and be ready to improvise because even if we have learned the story by heart, we might forget something, a detail, or forget a word. So we need to be ready to improvise 
and modify also the story depending on how your audience is reacting. Let me give you an example. Right now, I'm working on the story The Zombies Don't Eat Veggies. Wonderful one. Uh, it's about a Mexican family. They eat only zombie food, but their child, their little boy, he is, um, he loves veggies. So at, the plot is about this. I started to tell this story to my first graders and I noticed that some, some of the words were very hard for them because they are Italian children learning English and I was telling the story in English. So I just improvised and modified it immediately. Instead of reading, I started telling the story with my own words and with simple words and I just try to change it. Okay. That's second, second. Let's go to the second point. Prepare any material that can help you while you're telling the story. Just to, as an example, I love the stories of uh, Julia Donaldson. Julia Donaldson is a great, is a great writer of children's, uh, for children. And uh, um, uh, she uses rhymes a lot and I love that. Anyway, I love that one of the stories that she has wrote, she has written and it's, it's a very funny one. Uh, it's good for Halloween or carnival for that period. It's called Room on the Broom. Room on the Broom is a story about a witch, a good witch, that she's going around on her broomstick with her, with her cat and then she, well, things happen. I'm not going to tell you the whole story, but then uh, she meets other animals. They ask him, they ask her to, to, to write on the broomstick and a lot of things happens. But the thing is that I have here my witch, see? Okay, she's, she's the character of the story. And every time I tell this nice, uh, this nice story, I use, I use um, this witch. For the Italian kids, she's Rosella, Rosella. So I use this, this one and I use a dragon. Here's my dragon, because there's a dragon in the story. So I use both. Of course, uh, that you don't need to, the children, uh, sh they don't have to lose the focus on you. Okay, so not many distractors, okay? Just one or two puppets is okay. Another thing that, um, that you need, Point three is you need to practice the story before you start telling it. Uh, not, but not pra you either practice in front of a mirror or you could practice in front of a mirror so you see how your expressions are, the faces you make and everything. But it's also a good thing, uh, maybe it's ideal to have someone to look at you when you are, to watch you when you are telling the story. Why? Because then you will have a feedback from that person. See, that person could, of course, it must be, it has to be a person that you trust. So it can be, it can be your brother or your best friend. Somebody that will tell you if you are doing fine or if you forgot a part of a story or, or something like that. Okay, that's our third point. Then we've got another one which is prepare the setting. You need a setting for the story. Okay, let's let's imagine that our story is a creepy, scary story. Okay, we, we, we need to find a place, a, a place that is a little bit, you know, like dark, in a dark place. Uh, or maybe um, with a, a background uh, of a fireplace or if you're going to tell a story that's in a, that's in a forest maybe or in the jungle mm, we could like set uh, our, our room with trees or or we could even have a photo in the in the background, you know. So children imagine that they're in the jungle and 
and things like that. Okay, that's our fourth, uh, fourth point. And then fifth point, last but not least, smile. That works all the time. When you're telling, when you're working with kids, when you're dealing with little ones, you need to smile, okay? But the, because that's so nice. Okay, we have reached the end of the first part. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the second part, for a second part on how to win children over storytelling. Bye.